combination of Miller Drug. This building was built in 1954 and donated to us at the beginning of the year and what a transformation it has been with a lot of help from the community. This Thank is a place, a community place. Great. All volunteer work. All volunteer work. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm Karen Lee, and I am the Vice President of the Mayor of and Patrick Lee, my other half, has uh, been in charge of renovating this building, making it a from a drugstore into a gallery. It's really beautiful. So, what are the main things you do? Uh, well, the main things here are uh, the, the whole building was empty, and then new uh, drywall and track lighting was put on the walls, and then the uh, the original terrazzo floor was restored. And uh, uh, it's it, it's the equal of any gallery I've been in in Chicago or New York. And uh, we're, we're very pleased with it, and we're looking forward to the next show. Hi, my name is Craig Smith, and I am Craig Smith Gallery, um, and I exhibit in uh, Chicago, Dallas, and New York here in Michigan, and the artwork um, at this particular pop-up at the Marshall Garden Center for the Arts are from my different galleries that I collected and brought here tonight, and the particular painting that we're looking at right now is done by a person named Scott Colbert, and these are grave rubbing paintings, and what Scott does is he takes those canvases uh, with them on travels all over the U.S. and Europe, and he visits um, cemeteries and grave sites, and he he will lay this loose canvas on top of a grave site and do a rubbing, and that's how the names um, are transferred onto the canvas. And these canvases can take over 10 years to complete because every one of these names on this canvas has been to a specific grave site. Um, and Scott does three different kinds of paintings. The compilations, which are a lot of disparate names, uh, but they might have a sub theme or interesting pairings in it. Or he'll do a themed painting. Um, an example of that would be um, I have a Wizard of Oz painting of his that I sold recently with all the uh, cast members of the Wizard of Oz on it. Or he'll, he'll do an individual name. Um, like in the exhibit, I have a Andy Warhol and a Judy Garland. So, what other, you have about six artists here? Today? No, they're 13. 13. And they come from all over the United States. And you're, you live in Miller? Yes, Miller I'm, I've been a uh, Miller Beach resident uh, practically my whole adult life. So you've seen the art scene develop here recently? And... I've seen it develop and crash and, and develop all over again. So it's pretty exciting to see. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
I'm a former Miller resident now living in Florida Vallarta. And I came up here to do this art show today, featuring mostly um, pictures of Miller that I've painted. And um, I'm, texture is my big thing, texture and color, as you can see. It's a little hard to see from a photo, perhaps. But there's a lot of depth behind most of these paintings, and these are some of my favorite places from Miller. But you um, painted some of the photographs of local residents, Correct. Right? Uh, yes. Uh, these you want are, to point some of these out? These are um, photos taken from the Eclipse. Was Martha Bone took these. Um, these uh, the one up there is one from the pavilion, which Deb Weiss did, and those surrounding it um, are Jim Spicer's. Uh huh. Very nice. And let's go on the other side. Okay. Um, the lagoon is also a Jim Spicer photograph. Both of those are. Uh huh. And the Miller Woods are both Martha Bones. Um, I personally do mostly abstracts <laughs> in my paintings. If you see by the big flowers and the garden, it's kind of abstract. And that's what I do. Well, I love those. I mean, I, I took those photographs. She did. Yes, she did. <laughs> I love them as paintings. <laughs> and they're sold now. <laughs> and this is in Puerto Vallarta, right? <coughs> this is uh, an abstract of the scene from the Botanical Gardens in Puerto Vallarta. Great. Thank you very much. I'm Carl Olson. I'm a watercolor painter. It's my hobby. And uh, as I was telling you before, one of my techniques, which is a little bit unusual, is painting watercolor on gesso. Gesso allows me to really texture my scenes. Uh, as I showed you before, as an example, this, this uh, boat scene over here, my gesso creates a lot of texture in the rocks and in the water, and I specifically applied the gesso to, to give it that feel. Then I paint watercolor on it, and the beauty of watercolor on gesso is that you can lift off as much as you want, right back to white paper if you, if you want that. So anyway, it's a little bit about the technique that I use. Um, it's not the only thing that I do, sometimes watercolor just on watercolor paper, but this this is the most interesting Beautiful. technique for me. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, I like it. Hi, I'm Bob Palmieri and I'm a photographer. And what you see here are a couple of my pictures. Um, in this case, there are pictures of birds, a blue heron and a pair of sandpipers, um, both of which were shot within half a mile of where we're standing. The uh, blue heron actually is kind of a resident, been around here a lot, may still be around here for all I know. The uh, sandpipers are a little more fickle um, and fleeting, but I got really involved in this particular shoot and did in fact end up laying on my belly in the sand in order to get that anger that I really think was worth it. That's beautiful. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. You want to tell who you are? Sure. My name is uh, Jim Lane. I'm uh, a historian at Indiana University Northwest and I edit a magazine called Steel Shavings. So about 12 years ago, I did a special issue uh, called Lake Michigan Tales. And I had Dale Fleming, the artist, uh, do illustrations to go with the stories in the magazine. So for example, there's a story about artists uh, coming out from Chicago on the South Shore and uh, bringing their easels to uh, do landscapes. And so he did an illustration for that. Uh, there's a story about the old Michigan City Lighthouse, and so there's a, uh, the lighthouse over there um, that Dale did. And stories about uh, rough seas and uh, ghost ships. and uh, so, so like I say, the, some of these are simply dune scenes, and others are things that depict some, some phase in history. Dale lived, um, as I did, in an area that was part of the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. Mm -hmm. And we both had leasebacks and at some point had to get out of the homes that we lived in. And so part of, uh, of the issue Lake Michigan Tales talks about this community Edgewater, which uh, a fellow named John Lowey did an oral history of a vanishing community, as he called it. And Dale, the artist, did a lot of drawings of homes in Edgewater. Mm -hmm. This one, this one here. Can we hold that up? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, 
what was known as the old Bowers uh, home, probably the nicest home in that area, um, east of, of County Line Road. Mm -hmm. And some people wanted to save the house, but before they could do anything about it, the federal government just tore it down right away. But it had beautiful paneled uh, bookcases, and uh, John Bowers was a pioneer resident of Gary, who's his wife was the daughter of Gary's first mayor, Tom Knotts. Okay. So it was a, it had some historical value. Yeah. So anyway, Dale is is uh, uh, somebody that that old Millerites uh, are familiar with his work. Thank you very much. Very okay. Generous.